Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you all and welcome to the channel. In this video, we will cover uh, the different types of generics. We will not cover full examples in this lecture. This will merely delineate the, the different types of generics that we have in addition to the purpose of ge uh, genetics. Sorry, uh, generics, not genetics. <laughs> Insha'Allah, we will cover examples uh, when we tackle each type individually and separately. But before we begin, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-anbiya wal mursaleen, Sayyiduna Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan ila yawm al-deen. Warda Allahumma anna ma'ahum ajma'een, Allahumma ameen. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد. We begin in the name of Allah, the most merciful in this life and in the hereafter, and we thank him for all of his blessings that he has bestowed upon us, for they are innumerable. And we pray that we follow in the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his fellow companions. Amen. We also ask for prayers and blessings to be bestowed upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family, as they were bestowed upon Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him and his family. Amen. Now, before we cover the definition of generics, it would be best to see uh, the issue that generics overcome. So, within the driver class here, I will create a few static methods. Public static void display <coughs> int uh, n and here i will say n then i will say here string and here i will display a double and let us use the primitive no need to use the wrapper class yet and here I will also display um, boolean and here I will display uh, short. Okay. Now, as you can see, we have consumed multiple lines to overload this method. It is similar to uh, the print uh, the print method. But as you can see here, there is a print method for practically every variable available <laughs> in uh, <coughs> in Java, even uh, even arrays. Though technically, a character array is a string, as we have mentioned before. So, instead of creating or overloading multiple methods as such, it would be rather efficient if I can create a flexible parameter here with a flexible flexible data type that is applicable to all data types. That way, I do not need to explicitly overload a method that has the exact same implementation but with a different data type. I can easily create only one method and use that flexible data type that I am referring that I uh, referred to earlier. And when I actually wish to invoke the method, I remind the compiler that this method uses a flexible data type. Now, that data type that I wish to enforce for this implementation would be int. So I designate the flexible data type as int. Later, I can designate the flexible data type as a string, and so on and so forth. <coughs> now, 
This flexible data type allows the method in this example at the very least to behave generically as in it is applicable for all. Another example we could use would be the name of medication. Paracetamol, also known as acetaminophen, <clears throat> is the name of the compound in Tylenol, but also the name of the compound in the another brand name known as Panadol. <clears throat> Even though Panadol and Tylenol are manufactured by two different companies, both contain the same chemical, paracetamol or acetaminophen. Hence, acetaminophen is the generic name of the chemical because it is applicable for any brand that uses that chemical. The same applies for coding here. <clears throat> Thus, generics exist to create flexible data types. I do not know why I always add an extra T here. <laughs> that can be used uh, robustly across different methods and different classes. And I probably answered the question of how many types of generics we have. We have two. You can either have a generic method or you can have a generic class. And of course, you can have a generic method within a non-generic class. We will cover that later on, inshallah, bi-ithnillah and God willing. Now, we will not be covering examples with regards to how to create a generic method and a generic class. I will leave these for their respective lectures. That way I do not overwhelm you with information. Because as you know, the brain loses focus after 30 minutes. So if you have a lecture that goes beyond that limit, one hour, two hours, three hours, know that your professors do not care about you. And they know this. They simply uh, try to trick you into believing they care. Most of them fail, I know. <laughs> and so do that uh, teaching assistants as well. They fail. And I speak from experience. Anyways. But before I end this lecture, I need to highlight two important aspects of generics and these uh, aspects are mandatory they are part of the syntax so whether you are creating a method or a class a generic method or a generic class you must use those two aspects and i actually forgot the second one i do not know how that happened uh oh Alhamdulillah, thank God, I remembered. So, if you are, whether you are creating a generic method or a generic class, you must remember these two points. Firstly, generics rely on the presence of angle brackets. Why? Because within those angle brackets, you define the flexible data type. And I wrote it uh, with the same convention for reference data types because of the second rule. Generics only use reference data types, which means now, uh, I'll add a third point here, but this is part of the second point. Primitive data types or variables are not allowed in generics. 
That is why wrapper classes exist. That way, if you wish to use an int with a generic, you use the integer with a capital I, and so on and so forth. Now, if you see any method or any class that has uh, or interfaces too, but interfaces are considered class types. If you see any class type or method that uses angle brackets, know that uh, they belong to the generics uh, aspect of Java. So just remember that primitive data types are not allowed. Why are they not allowed? That is what we will discuss insha'Allah bi'ithnillah and God willing in the upcoming lectures why you cannot use primitive data types i hope this lecture was helpful and beneficial to you all enjoy the rest of your day everyone be safe take care and peace be upon you all wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala ali muhammad kama sallaita ala ibrahim wa ala ali ibrahim wa barik ala muhammad wa ala ali muhammad kama barakta ala ibrahim wa ala ali ibrahim fil alamin innaka hamidun majid